The history of Mexico City traces its origins to the heart of the Aztec Empire. Founded in 1325 as Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Triple Alliance, the city was built on an island in the middle of Lake Texcoco. Renowned for its grandeur and architectural marvels, including the majestic Templo Mayor and intricate canal systems, Tenochtitlan emerged as one of the largest and most powerful cities in the world at the time of the Spanish conquest in the early 16th century. Following the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors led by Hernán Cortés in 1519, Tenochtitlan fell to Spanish forces in 1521 after a lengthy siege, marking the beginning of a new chapter in the city's history. Under Spanish rule, the city was named Mexico City and became the capital of New Spain, a vast colonial territory spanning much of present-day Mexico and parts of Central America. The name Mexico itself is derived from the Nahuatl word Mexico, which is believed to refer to the Mexica people, the indigenous group that founded Tenochtitlan. Over time, Mexico came to signify the entire territory controlled by the Spanish crown in the region. Throughout the colonial period, Mexico City flourished as a center of political, economic, and cultural exchange, blending European influences with indigenous traditions. The city's historic center, with its grand cathedrals, palaces, and plazas, reflects this rich cultural synthesis and stands as a UNESCO World Heritage Site today. In the late 19th and 20th centuries, Mexico City experienced rapid urbanization and industrialization, transforming into a sprawling metropolis in the political, economic, and cultural heart of modern Mexico. Despite facing challenges such as rapid population growth, pollution, and socioeconomic inequality, the city remains a dynamic hub of innovation, creativity, and diversity. Today, Mexico City is a vibrant mosaic of history and modernity, where ancient ruins coexist with skyscrapers and colonial architecture blends with contemporary art and design. The city's cultural scene is unparalleled with world-class museums, galleries, theaters, and music venues showcasing the country's rich artistic heritage. Moreover, Mexico City's culinary offerings are a reflection of its multicultural identity, with street markets, fondas, and upscale restaurants serving up a tantalizing array of traditional Mexican dishes alongside international ones. Mexico City's journey from ancient capital to modern metropolis is a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of its people. As a vibrant cultural crossroads, the city continues to inspire and captivate visitors from around the world, inviting them to explore its rich history, diverse culture, and boundless creativity. Hello, and welcome to episode 11 of the Travel Like Locals podcast. I'm your host, Alex Tabry. Somehow, it took me over 21 years into my life to visit the closest foreign country to me. At the beginning of the summer of 2018, I ended up finding flights to Mexico City for a little under $200 and couldn't pass up the opportunity to visit. I was joined by my friends Daniel, Ben, and Coy. Though we were in the closest country to Texas, I was surprised to find the least amount of people who spoke English compared to anywhere else I had been apart from China. Luckily, Daniel had studied abroad in Spain the summer before and acted as our translator for the trip. During our few days there, we ate a lot of great food and explored Mexico City and the surrounding area. We walked around downtown, visited the Chapultepec Castle, went to the Tequila and Mezcal Museum, traveled to Teotihuacan to explore the pyramids, and spent the last day at Xochimilco, where we rented a riverboat, listened to mariachis on passing boats, and had canoes come up to our boat selling food and drinks. You can't walk through the streets without being called in by the smell of tacos al pastor. If you would like to watch me make this, you can find my recipe video on TikTok and Instagram at TLL underscore pod. For this episode, I have interviewed local tour guide Gabriel. We talked about the best way to get around, the must-see sites, and the differences between Tex-Mex and Mexican food. For all of Gabriel's recommendations and more, be sure to check out my website, www.tllpod.com. But for now, on to the interview. All right, I'd like to welcome our next guest on the podcast, a tour guide from Mexico City, Gabriel. Gabriel, thank you so much for being with us today. No, thank you so much for the invitation. Of course. So could you uh, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into being a tour guide? Well, uh, first I started like, I really love my culture. I want to show a little bit how like I started this 
I was born and raised here in Mexico City. I have lived my whole life here. But like I wanted to show a little bit more like from the other side, like not the touristic places. So that's how I like got involved a little bit to show the people what I like to do. Okay, so how long have you been doing this for now? I have been about approximately a year now. Yeah, almost a year. I have been the tour guide around the city. I like to show like all the local stuff, the most touristic places, the best ways or the best things that you can do here at Mexico City. Do you have any specific areas that you specialize in for tours? Yeah, well, I have done, I can do like tours around the city, like the most touristic places that we have, but I specialize a little bit more on the food or culinary tour. I'd like to show you guys like more to some markets and show a little bit how the mo what's the most of the cuisine that we have. I show you a little bit of the ingredients, how to eat it, the best way like to prepare everything, and a little bit of the history of all the dishes that we have. Awesome. So I just want to start off the podcast by asking you uh, some common myths about Mexico City. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So the first one is that Mexico City is one of the most populated cities in the world. It, it is. Uh, you know, we're about 22 million people here in Mexico City. So you will always find a lot of people in here. If you don't see someone on the street, like be careful or watch out because <laughs> You always like will see, be seeing people bumping into someone. Like on the weekends, will be the one of the most crowded days that we have. So yeah, you will see a lot of people everywhere. Okay, um, the second one is the city is sinking. Oh yeah, sure. You know our city it's built in a lake, so most of the buildings or the infrastructure that we have it's kind of sinking and you now will be see like the, the floor even. So in some places, a building will be a little bit lower from the other one. So the, like the government have tried to like make something about that and like be rebuilding the building, like having new infrastructure, like making improvements on the side. Okay, very cool. Um... The third one is to be in Mexico City, you need to know Spanish. A little bit, kind of. You know, Google Translator will always be really helpful. But like not too much Mexican speak English. That's something true. So you may have like la that language barrier a little bit because even we'll try to be polite and to like kind of make an effort to speak to you if you're not, you don't speak Spanish. But it's going to be a little bit difficult. So I recommend to learn some words like local words or how to order something or yeah, like to make it through. Okay. So even in tourist areas, you will probably uh, not find too many people who speak English? In the touristic places, yeah, you always find like people who, who speak English. But like a, in most of the places, like if you go to a grocery store or you go like to a restaurant or something like that in some places they don't speak too much English so only in the touristic areas it's gonna be okay like to you don't need like the the Spanish to get through like to the city okay that makes sense um, the next one I think that a lot of people might worry about uh, Mexico City is unsafe well that's a myth that have become like it's understandable we have a past so, you know, we, at the past, it was a little bit dangerous, like, to be in the city. Now, this has been changing a little bit, like, since Mexico City, it has become really popular. We got, like, a lot of police in the city. We got different kind of polices. So, it's going to be really safe in the area. There are some places that you can be walking around, like, 2 or 3 in the morning without any problem. You can, like, be just walking, hanging around a little bit. So, it's, it has changed a little bit right now. So I, I believe and I will say that it's really safe now to come to Mexico City. Yeah, I think I actually heard that like Mexico City has the most number of police officers per people. Like there's one police officer for every 100 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see once you get to the capital and all that, you'll see a lot of people, a lot of police officers like going around, like watching out. We got different kinds of 
We even got like police for the tour. So it has changed a little bit now. Yeah, and I think a lot of times what people are really worrying about or hear about Fair Mexico is like the border towns where more problems are. But in Mexico City, I think uh, from everything I've heard and experienced, it's a very safe place. Yeah, yeah, sure it is. It, it, it is. Cool. And the last myth is the traffic is crazy. Yeah, that's that's a little bit true here as well. In the rush hours, like something I say always, like never trust Google Maps, the times that it gives you, because if it says it's 30 minutes, it could become an hour because there's going to be a lot of traffic. You, We suffer a little bit as well from some protests. So some streets might be closed and all that. So always watch out your timings and all that. But yeah, like it's really walkable, the city. So you can like be just walking and all that. But the traffic is going to be something that you might suffer and have a difference from the other countries as well. It's really hard to drive here in Mexico City. You got to be like a little bit brave to drive because people here are not polite sometimes to drive. So you just got to be in throwing the car to the other person so you can get through and through the traffic. Good to know. Um, so in your opinion, what would you say is the best time for somebody to come and visit Mexico City? Oh, yeah. To visit Mexico City, well, you can come all around the year. We got really nice weather, but certainly we have like the rainy season that it's on August, September and October that we have. So those days might not be like really nice to like going outside some to do some activities outside. So the best time I recommend to come here in summer or on winter, we got like two big holidays. We got like the day of death and Christmas. So those two days will be like uh, the biggest holidays that we have. And I recommend to come on this on the timing that it will be November. It'll be, yeah, November, September, December, and January. Okay, could you talk more about the Day of the Dead festival? Oh, yeah, sure. The Day of Dead, or what we call, like, Dia de Muertos, you know, it's a festival where we, like, celebrate the people who pass away, so we may, like, remember them. So we're going to be putting what we call an ofrenda. An ofrenda, it's like a stand, so you can put, like, the food that the person liked, you put the picture of that person, the beverage that he used to consume, and it's really traditional. It's a, a lot of people will celebrate this. It's all around like Mexico, not just in Mexico City. It's around Mexico. And it's something that has like the present. It will be really colorful those days. A lot of people like will be outside. We got like big praise for those days because we want to remember like a happy moment of those person. Very cool. So I think another holiday that a lot of people might uh, associate with Mexico is Cinco de Mayo. But um, is that really big in Mexico City or is that really a, a different part of Mexico? It's another different part of Mexico. You know, like you said, a lot of people like associate that day to us, but we celebrate a little bit, but not too much. It's something that has become like a little bit more popular on the outside of the country, like in the United States or in other parts. So yeah, like Cinco de Mayo, it's more like just not to go to work. We don't celebrate that too much that day. <laughs> okay, where, uh, which city was it again? Do you know that uh, Cinco de Mayo originates? Oh yeah, Cinco de Mayo originates like for the Batalla de Puebla. You know, it's it's near from Mexico City. It's about like two hours from Mexico City, and it's really close from here. So that it's a really interesting like place where we won the war. The war. So it's it's something like I tell you, like not too much Mexican, like now at the moment know a little bit. So they just like get it to get a day off at work. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. So for the extreme ends of the weather. Uh, how cold and uh, how hot does it get uh, in Mexico City? Oh, yeah. It, how cold it gets. We can get like, you know, we're not used to cold weather here. So in 20 degrees, that will be like 20 Celsius. It's about like 68 Fahrenheit, I believe. That's cold for mm -hmm. us. 
So the coldest that we can get is 10 Celsius, that it's like 55 Fahrenheit. That's a colder that's in some places that we'll be getting. And we can get up to 30, 35 Celsius, that it's, uh, I believe, 108 Fahrenheit. I'm not wrong, a little bit. About 100. Yeah, but uh, that's the hottest that we can get. Like I told you, we don't not, we're not used to cold weather. So you always see like people wearing, um, when it's like 20 Celsius, you'll be seeing people wearing like big jackets with gloves and all that. Even if it's going to be like snowing, even when we don't get snow, people will be prepared for it. So Mexico City is uh, kind of higher in elevation, right? So at night, does it get uh, colder? It gets, yeah, it can change like the weather through the day. At the morning, it could be a little bit chill. In the afternoon, it could a little bit of, be a little bit cloudy and sunny. And like during the night, it could be a little bit colder. But as well, the coldest that we get, it's like 20 Celsius. That's the minimum, like the most, the most common that we get. Okay. Makes sense. Um, so could you tell us uh, or teach us some basic Spanish words and phrases that would be really useful for uh, tourists to know? Oh, yeah, sure. We got, well, here people try to be always polite. So something that you might hear always would be good morning or buenos dias. Good afternoon, buenas tardes, and good night, buenas noches. You know, the greetings, the, the always, it will be like hola, it will be hi, or perdón, it will be like sorry. What else? We got, we got a word as well that we say provecho. That word, we use it like when we're going to a place to eat, you'll hear provecho. Provecho means like bon appetit. So before eating, you'll say provecho. And when you leave a place and someone's eating as well in there, you'll say provecho. It's a word that you might hear a lot when you get like to, to eat in a place as well. Well, it would be, you might hear, I don't know if you have hear the word gringo. And it's like to refer to someone white. So it's going to be as well some words that you might hear like that. What else could be, we got, como estas, how are you? And then we go to the other words on the other side. That would be, how much, uh, sería, cuánto es. We got, like, yeah, like I told you, Google Translate always would be really good, but we got some words that are really unique to hear. Yeah, could you talk more about that? Because I know uh, Spain Spanish, Mexico Spanish, and the different countries in South America, their Spanish is just very, uh, very different from each other. Uh, could you, would you think that, or would you say that those differences are similar to like American English versus uh, British English versus Scottish English? Is that kind of how the differences are? Oh, yeah, how the differences are. You know, like you said, we got the Spanish from Spain and the Spanish from Mexico here. Sometimes we cannot like understand what they're telling because the words, they speak a little bit faster. The words that they have a little bit uh, totally different. So they know by, they have a name for something and we call it totally different. As well, like the Spanish from Colombia or from the South America, it's totally different. You know, it's kind of hard. I have some travelers that have come from like Colombia or from Peru, from the south. And sometimes like doing my tours, it, it's a little bit difficult because some words are really unique to their part. And some words are really different in here. I'll be like what it could be like. They don't have like the word that I, told, I was telling you before that way. The word that I say provecho, they don't have it over there, but they say aprovecho. So they have some similar words. It would be like one of those. Um, and yeah, basically they're totally different. So if you, you know, they have told me like Mexi the Mexican and Spanish, it's a little bit faster to understand because in Spain they talk really fast. That's yeah, very interesting. And within Mexico itself, uh, are there different kind of dialects during for through the different uh states like the same that would be in the u.s like the south versus northern accents 
Yeah, yeah, there, there are different accents that we have, like, from the north, from the center, and to the south. As well, there's some, a little bit, sometimes, you can identify when someone is from the north or when someone is from the south, because they, they sound totally different. As well, they speak a little bit different, but you can get, like, some accent, some words, it will be, like, some words, more the accent, that it's, like, from that state that you can get. Dialects, we have a lot of dialects here in Mexico City, but they have like, like lost a little bit of influence over Mexicans. So it, we have lost some dialects, so it's going to be really rare to find someone that speaks that dialect. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I think the same thing's happening uh, all over the world for sure. So could you tell us uh, a little bit about some cultural differences that you might experience in Mexico City that are different than uh, other parts of the world? Things that you generally like to point out to uh, whoever you're giving your tour guides to? Oh, well, yeah. Well, the main stuff that I have found the culture different is that we always here use spicy. We use, we like the spicy food. Like in general, that would be. With the Europeans and some of the Americans, I have struggled with that, that here, we add spicy to everything that will be and as well i don't know but like germans don't like it too too much like to be a little bit polite they well they are polite but they sound a little bit like rude or strong their accent that's something i have to figure out as well like people in general here in mexico city always try to be like they don't like try to mess with no one they have like be really peaceful once, if you bother your own stuff, they're going to be okay. But something that you might notice here, it's a lot of people are, are religious. So there are Catholics, Christians, and we got here a religion that we say that it's called La Santa Muerte or the Holy Death. And they believe in the death, you know. So if you try or to try to make fun a little bit of that, some people get angry. So it's more like to respect the religion in here because some people will take it that part really seriously yeah very cool i've heard a, a little bit about that uh the religion about the that worships at death could you talk uh, a little bit more about that oh yeah 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 you know la santa muerte or the holy death it's a culture with you know mexican have belief in the deaths and the pre-hispanic we got some go gods but the la santa muerte it's more like a new spain influence the skull or the figure that's like represented, it's a new Spain influence. And this started when the people didn't believe what the Catholics said. They started to believe on what on the holy death or on the death. So it's more like a for someone that don't believe what the Catholics say, so all the praise that you can give to to Jesus, they're gonna start to believe in the death. This it's a little bit difficult or hard to explain. Because some people take like and use this for black magic or brujeria, what we call. So if you want to make a spell on someone, you start to believe in the death. And that's how they like starting using. Here, you know, we got the three different kinds of uh, magic. We got red magic, white magic, and black magic. Each of this has a different purpose, like white magic. It's more like for cleaning your soul, like spiritual, some herbs, and all that. Black magic, it's more like to make a spell on someone, like make a ritual or something to do like that. So, and we got red magic. Red magic, it's more like for some devil, for some demons. If so, if you want to contact someone, you will like try or start practicing red magic. So it depends on what you want. You will like try to focus on something. Okay, no, that's uh, really interesting. Every big city in the world probably has some safety concerns that people should be aware of. Is there any uh, advice you would give to tourists uh, about staying safe in Mexico City? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, we're big. We're a big city. So something I recommend always is, like, not to bring, like, jewelry or, like, to have, like, yeah, like, not to show too much extravagant stuff. Like, don't take out your wallet with a lot of money or something like that. Because some people will might, like, looking at you more that you're not from here. Like, you know, you don't, 
if some tourists don't blend too much in like the local people so people will notice when you're like traveling or you're a tourist so it's more like that like the concerns we got as well like watch out where some some scams that we have in here it's more like it could be like people trying to give you like free stuff or something like that so i recommend not to accept nothing from someone because they'll try to give you something for free and then uh, like charging you or asking for money so that's something i recommend with that like no jewelry have a bag as well like with a zipper bag and put it at the front there you can bring your cell phone your your cash your wallet and all that as well watch out like you said we're a lot of people here so at some point you might bump into someone and at that point they can like try to pickpocket you so it's more like walk, watching out your pockets in here but like in general mexico city it's really safe no it's uh definitely some great advice um in your opinion what would you say is the best area of mexico city to stay in or what areas should just be avoided completely oh yeah like the best places to stay there's three big places that have like become really popular for like travelers to stay in there and one would be called Condesa. It's near the castle of Chapultepec. And the other one will be Roma, that it's a little bit like at the north of that same place. It's near the castle as well. And Roma and Polanco, that will be the other one. This, those three, that it's Roma, Condesa, and Polanco, those three places would always be the best places to stay or nearby. You can rent some Airbnbs, there are some big hotels in there some hostel so it depends on your budget where you want it but there's always a place ne near there to stay the places i will avoid to like not to stay it's on like on the outsides of the city they're a little bit cheaper yeah but sometimes it's not the best place at night to be in there because during the day it could be really safe it's okay but at night there's like people go to their homes it's a little bit more lonely and you cannot walk in the, in those places. On the other places that I have told you, people in there are like, pot. since there's a lot of bars nearby, there's a lot of police in there. You can walk two or three in the morning without any problem. So that's what I recommend. Perfect, no, that's great. Um, so you've said that Mexico City is a very uh, walkable city in general, but for people going maybe longer distances to other places, what would you say is the best way uh, to get around the city? The best way to get around the city, like I told you, it's walkable, but as well sometimes it's going to be like too far to get like walking over there to the place that you want to go. We got a really good bike lane. You can rent a bike. And it depends, like, for how much time or how many days you want it to rent. It's going to be the price. But it's going to be really affordable, that that side. And as well, like I told you, the, the bike lane can go to the north of the city, to the south, and to the west, and to the east. So it, that, that, would be a really people, that would be really good for people who like to ride bike. Oh, yeah, the public transportation, it's really good. It's safe as well. You know, we got like a really big system of the metro or subway and it's really nice. It's going to be, you can go all around the city on that. It's going to be really cheap, but like be prepared to get a squish in there. Since we're a lot of people on the rush hours, the metro, it's not your best option. Like you see, because you're going to get squished in there. So, but as well, you can do, I recommend always like, we got like taxis and Ubers here. They're affordable, they're really nice. But I recommend a little bit more Uber since you know, you're not from the area, you know, probably you know the place where it is, but it's better like to show it on a map. Like, so I recommend Uber, it's affordable, it's fast, it's quick. So in the taxi sometimes, don't, like I told you, we got the language barrier, so, they probably not understand you where 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 you gonna go, so and they sometimes the taxi will try to scam you as well, because since you're not from the area, they'll try just to sh throw a, a number like say like two hundred pesos or three hundred pesos, when it could be least or less, it would be a little bit less. So I recommend like Uber, 
the public transportation is good. We got bike lane or just walk. That would be really nice. Perfect. And yeah, I've heard there's uh you can tell what an official taxi is based on the license plate. Like I think uh if it starts with an A or a B, then that means it's an official taxi. Uh is is that true? Yeah, it's true. You see the taxis, they're marked but uh like you said, they have like letters at the back and they have like the logo of of a taxi. It says taxi on the number plate as well, so you can ad- identify when it's an an original taxi. The colors as well, you, it has to be painted in a certain color, that it's pink right now, that's the color that we use. It's pink with white. But yeah, you gotta watch out where, you, where you're taking a taxi and all that. So that's why I sometimes I recommend the Uber. Yeah, no, I, uh, I took Ubers uh, for some of the places I was in in Mexico City and yeah, great experience, very inexpensive and uh, I mean, besides sitting in the traffic, you know, we got where we needed to and uh, yeah, no, I would definitely recommend that if you can't uh, walk to a place. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Uh, as well, I recommend that part. Perfect. So uh, let's talk a bit about uh, more of your expertise area in food. So could you tell us some of the must-try dishes when you're in Mexico City? Yeah, some of the most try. It's going to be a little bit hard because we got a lot of food. You know, we try to innovate or make something different every time. But like when I show in a tour, I recommend something that we call pozole. I don't know if you to try it, but pozole is a soup that the base is a corn, probably you know as hominy, and then it could be with chicken or pork. It has a little bit of spices and tomatoes inside. As well, there we got something that we call pancita, or menudo. Mm. You know, that one is the stomach of the cow, and the texture, it's a little bit more chewy, and the flavor, it's a little bit intense. So that's more like for brave people who want to be a little bit more adventurous. We got some quesadillas as well. I recommend the quesadillas. And you know, here we make quesadillas with blue corn. We add the Oaxaca cheese and the Oaxaca cheese. It melts really good. It probably tastes like mozzarella. And it's really nice that cheese. Then you can add the toppings that you like. I recommend two different toppings that are the pork skin or what we call chicharron. That one, it's a little bit like, we use the crispy chicharron, but we put it in the red sauce. So you got to soak it a little bit so it, it's not dry. Then I recommend something that we call huitlacoche. And huitlacoche is the fungus of the corn. Hmm. That one, you know, it's like corn smoth. Probably you know what's corn smoth. And that one, it's really nice as well. It tastes a little bit fungusy, but it's made with corn or blue corn. Okay. Then that's what we got quesadillas okay. made with squash flour, beef or chicken, a little bit more traditional. Then we got like what we call antojitos mexicanos. And that's a little bit more like fast food because it has to be quick. We got, they're like different shape, different color. So that one, it's a little bit more hard to explain, like without like an image, like to show you how it looks. Mm-hmm. As well, if you're in Mexico City or here in Mexico, you got to try tacos. You know, tacos are the best and they're the, the principal stuff that we have. Then that's what we got, like really nice sweet breads or just like bread. You know, Mexico here, we like our bakery. It's really unique because we try to make like all the bread sweet. So everything will always have custard cream. We have like strawberry jelly, pineapple jelly, sugar glass or chocolate at the top. That bread is really unique. We got like bakeries have been since 1927, since the 19. So that as well it's really common and it's a little bit dry so most people will have it with a coffee or with a tea we got big we got churros as well some desserts will be a churro and hot chocolate then it's gonna be it's kind of hard you know so there there's a lot of stuff where to try so you gotta be able here like come and experience like new stuff yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I think uh, you can't go wrong with uh, almost any food from uh, Mexico. So, uh, but for people who might be worried um, about food safety, it, what would you say to them about um, eating street food? Or, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, it's a concern always when you travel, like to go to to a place and try something. 
like I recommend not to try to eat everything or a lot of stuff the first day because you not always have like an iron stomach so it's gonna be a little bit hard like to your stomach to adapt to that part so I recommend to go like a little bit only try something then a little bit more here because everything in here will be spicy or greasy so that could be a, a concern as well the water some people have told me about the water they feel a little bit worried on that part most people in here use like filter water we don't use tap water you know so so that as well it's good it's really safe on that part but yeah like try to wash your hands or you you like hand sanitizer watch the place that you're going so those are the recommendations that I go like during the summer or when it's a little bit hot in here not to consume like like diary products like sour cream or cheese or something like that because you know you don't know how how much time it has spent on the sun so that's something i recommend okay yeah no i've uh definitely uh followed the advice not to drink the tap water stick to um bottled water but from my experience the street food is completely safe to eat not not like uh, not like it would be in India where you might have to uh, avoid that, but Mexico City, if you see some tacos al pastor on the street, definitely go and enjoy them. Yeah, sure. I have some travelers that have told me, and they always bring with that concern. That will tell me, like, they don't want to eat something because they feel they're going to get poisoned. And no, it's like I said, it's really safe in here. Like, just watch the play. You'll see people, like, always in there. If you see, like, a lot of people eating in that place, you should definitely try because there's something that that's a rule that is not right but it's is that you got to try in that place definitely so are there any specific restaurants that you would recommend or maybe areas uh where there's some great food yeah well we got some restaurant there's a brand that we call la casa de toño in that one it has some some a few locals or some restaurants and it has really authentic and really good mexican in there you know, we got like as well some fancy restaurants. We got a restaurant that it's called Puyo that has like two Michelin stars, I believe. So that one is beat. In you know, we got a lot of restaurants. Every corner that you go, you see a stand of food or someone selling something. So it's kind of hard to tell you where, but the areas that I recommend will be near Polanco, Condesa, or Roma. There are some really good restaurants at night where you can try like local food, even on the center of the city as well. There are some really good restaurants in there. Like I told you, if you see people like eating in that place, you should go like to try something. Even you might have the language Perfect. barrier, you're going to be able to try some local food in there. Awesome. So uh, I, I'm from Texas. I've grown up on Tex-Mex. Could you talk about how Tex-Mex is different than traditional Mexican food? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Like, you know, that's something always that some people tell me. To get it, like, first, burritos are not Mexican. Nachos are not Mexican. And fajitas are not Mexican. You know, always, like, people are telling me, oh, yeah, we try Mexican food. We try burritos. And that's, a, it's more Tex-Mex. But since it, it has become really, it's really popular, we're trying to adapt the burritos now in the Mexican cuisine as well. So you might see a burrito of al pastor, but we don't use too much like beans or rice in here. It's more like the flour tortilla, the al pastor, onion, cilantro, and that's it. A little bit of salsa, always salsa, you know. The salsas, watch out with the salsas. You never know. Uh, even a, a Mexican tell you it's not spicy, don't believe him because probably it's going to be a little bit spicy. As well, the nachos, some people believe always that we use a lot of jalapeno. People are like, oh, jalapeno, Mexican. We don't use like too much jalapeno in the Mexican cuisine. We got other different kind of chilies, but they're really, they're, they're, they're a little bit more spicy. But yeah, like Tex-Mex, it's a really big, uh, it's really influable. I don't know, like. We, we like Tex-Mex as well a little bit, so that's why some people are introducing the Tex-Mex into the Mexican cuisine and trying to adapt that part and like, and the nachos add a little bit of al pastor to the top. Yeah. Now, uh, the, 
I just remember the first time I had real Mexican food, like having grown up with Tex-Mex, I was just uh, felt so lost. I was like, this is um, completely different. But I mean, they're both great, obviously. But um, yeah, just something for people to note that it's they're not the same. They're not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like Mexican get a, really, a little bit of fun that they're like, oh, burrito. I try a burrito. But yeah, like I told you, we're trying to adapt that part here now in Mexico. So it's it's okay it's okay yeah so could you talk about what the common meal times are in mexico city oh yeah uh the meal times that we have like breakfast will be it's kind of hard because in some places the activities start at five in the morning so people will have like big breakfast so you i don't know if you have try or uh, to the people that are hearing us or seeing us they'll there's something that we call tamales or tamales. Mm. You know that one? It's the base is corn inside, then it's stuffed with meat, a little bit of salsa, chilies, or cheese. It depends on the what it's stuffed on. And that one, it's a little bit heavy. So people will have like big breakfast to get a lot of energy. And you know, breakfast could be from five in the morning to eleven in the morning. Then we got lunch. Lunch, it, it's going to be like 12 in the afternoon to 2 p.m. As well, that's going to be a, a really big meal that we like to eat a little bit heavy. And then finally, we got dinner that it's going to be like about 6 in the afternoon to 8 o'clock. People sometimes don't like to eat really heavy. So they just have like a sweet bread and coffee. That's their dinner. But... Some other people are a little bit different and will have some tacos. You know, tacos are for always. It could be a breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So it's like sometimes like you how you feel a little bit more comfortable, how you're going to be devil managing those times that you have for food. So that's, that's really interesting. So you're saying tamales are a common uh, breakfast food. Oh, yeah. Yeah, tamales are breakfast. They're... You know, it's tamales, and then we got a beverage that we call atole. And that beverage, it's a little bit thick. It has milk, it has cinnamon, and it has something that we call piloncillo. And piloncillo, it's more like cane sugar concentrate. So it's, uh, it's a beverage, but it's warm, thick, and sweet. And it's like the full combo that you get with tamales. Then for, for breakfast as well, you get some chilaquiles, there are some tortillas, that have been with some green salsa, some chicken, cheese. So we got a lot of variety, but like I told you, and we like salty breakfast. Not too much people like like sweet breakfast or something like that. No, it's more like a salty and heavy breakfast. Interesting. Yeah, it's almost like the kind of complete opposite of America where you'd have maybe a sweeter breakfast with like a cereal or a donut or something and then a heavier meal for dinner. Uh, but I do think it makes more sense to have your heavier meal at the beginning of the day uh, give you the energy throughout the day and kind of uh, go down throughout the day. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's 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 the opposite from what you have. Like, yeah, some people might have cereal here, but it's not not really that common. Cool. So, uh, no, that was really interesting. Um, could we talk about some of the musty places when you're coming to visit Mexico City? Oh yeah, we got a lot of places what you can visit. You know, we got the touristic areas that we have, like the Teotihuacan pyramids for where the Mexica started. We got Xochimilco, that it's like a neighborhood that you can go for a boat ride and see what is left from the lake where our city is built. Then you can go for a boat ride, have some shots of mezcal, of tequila, some beverage in there. What else? We got the Anthropolic Museum. You can do as well like wrestling or lucha libre. And there are some, we got really local markets as well. One of the one of the markets that we have, it's one of the ones that I do a tour and it's called La Merced. That's the second larger biggest market in Mexico City. We got another bigger market that is called Central de Abastos. And as well, that one, it's massive. So it depends on what you like. We got some different stuff where you can go. We got a lot of museums as well. So if you want to see a little bit of history of art, I got some people that like art. They go to the Frida Kahlo, Frida Kahlo Museum, to the Chapultepec Muse uh, Castle. 
So it depends on your what you like. You should go to a different place. Yeah, I uh, I remember the Teotihuacan um, pyramids. The really cool thing there is that you can actually climb them as opposed to some of the other uh, old pyramids where it's not allowed. You can just look at them, but there, at least Teotihuacan, you can actually climb them. Yeah, you could at the patch you could climb them. We got like two years, I believe, two years that we cannot climb them anymore to the top. Like since it has suffered some damages and all that. The people, the government, like closed, so you cannot climb anymore. But you can go on the hot air balloon trip, so you can rise in the morning, do the hot air balloon trip, and see the pyramids from the top. That's the only thing. Yeah, it has changed a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I was there. I think it was 2017 or 2018. Uh, but yeah, uh, it makes sense. I mean, with all the other ones, it's slowly happened over time. Um, just accidents or. Um, degrading them so uh, but no that's cool that there's a option there that you can just ride a hot air balloon around it like see yeah that's that's one of the most common as well like a lot of people like to do that because it's a little bit like cheaper from other parts of the world like you know they have told me that that in some places it could be a little bit expensive so if you want to save a little bit of money here it's a place where you can get on a hot air balloon and it's really safe to get on it so and um, I think uh, Xochimilco is another really cool place to highlight. Um, it reminds me a lot of, in Texas, San Antonio, we have the Riverwalk um, that just goes throughout the city. Um, and uh, But could you talk more about Xochimilco for people who uh, haven't seen it or heard of it? Oh, yeah. Xochimilco, it's a place that you see, like, all the neighborhoods. It's really nice. There's a part that has a still a little bit of the lake where it's reminding of the lake that we have. So you can go in there like in what we call a trajinera and it's like kind of like a colorful bow that has a name. It will have a unique name, probably the name of the wife of the girlfriend or something specific. You can go in that bit in that that boat. You ha can have some beverage in there, drink some tequila. If you like a little bit more strong stuff, you can have some mezcal or just some beer in there. And Xochimilco, it's it's really nice in there. You can do as well, there's a new attraction that you can go on kayak. If you don't like going on the boat ride, you can go on kayak and see like the sunset and all that. So it, it's really it's really peaceful and nice in there. Yeah, I remember like you basically rent a boat. Uh, you can fit maybe up to 20 people, but uh, if you just have four people in your group, then uh, it's it's not crazy expensive. And then as you're going down the river, there's uh, a bunch of like smaller boats will come up to you, like either selling drinks or food or like mariachi bands coming up uh, who will perform for you. It was so cool. Yeah, yeah, it depends on performance and what you want to like to get. Like you said, there's some mariachi or live music that you can be here in. Like I said, they can give you mu uh, food in there. So it's really nice, like, going down there to the boat. Yeah, and I remember most of the groups that we would see there, it seemed like it was uh, local people who were having maybe a birthday party or just a celebration for something. It felt very local. It did not feel touristy at all. No, yeah, like you said, it's really local. Like I tell you, we're a lot of people, so you will see a lot of locals always, like, trying to do, like, new stuff, hanging around with the family, like, going outside, drink something, or eat something. And um, were there any off-the-beaten-path places that you would recommend people to check out? Oh, that's good. That's really nice, yeah. Well, you know, there's something always what you like to do, because in... There's always something to offer, like Mexico City always has something to offer you. Like, what depends on what you like. If you like art, we got really big murals, we got really nice museums. But there's, like I told you, the market that I go to the tour, it's not really touristic. The Sonora, the Sonora and La Merced market. Those two markets, they, they are becoming a little bit now, like, popular. Since people like to see how the local lives in there, because that's more for locals, go do their groceries and like to buy all what they need, they'll go to that market. As well, there we got some really nice museum outside of the city that are not like too much people to visit. And they have really like a 
a lot of architecture, how the modeling, how the city is built and all that kind of stuff. So it's really nice. It depends on what you like. There's a spot where you can go to. Perfect. And for anybody who wants to pick up a souvenir or a local craft, is there any specific place or area that you would recommend them to check out? And is there any specific souvenir that you think that uh, people should especially pick up? Especially pick up. Yeah. Well, as well, it depends on what you like because we got markets dedicated for something that we got a market that it's called Mercado de Artesanías. And it's more like for souvenirs. If you like a, like a poncho, you got a, you want a, a cup or a, a little glass of tequila. You want some skulls or some spoons, like local clothes as well. They sell all the kind of stuff, all the souvenirs. You want a little bit of jewelry as well. They sell it in there. Like what's good to, to give to someone? I have some people in my tours that take like, there's a soap that it's for love, for money, or to make a spell on someone. So it's more like magic a little bit. They like to give that kind of stuff. So I don't know, it's it's kind of interesting, like everyone gives something different. So I think uh, Mexico as a whole is very famous for some of the alcoholic drinks. Could you talk about some of uh, those and what kind of the bar culture or drinking culture is like in Mexico? The drinking culture, it's really popular here. You say some of the beverages that we have, it's tequila. Tequila, it's really popular. That one could be like different flavors, tamarind, mango, jamaica, or hibiscos. So it's 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 a lot like as well. We got like mezcal. You know, mezcal, it's a variety of tequila as well, but it's a little bit stronger. So if you want to get drunk a little bit easier, you get like mezcal because as well, it could be with different flavors. It has tamarind, it has mango, it has peach, it has cane sugar, it has a worm inside inclusive. So it depends on what you like, you can get like something different. The cocktails or the bar, the, the culture of drinking in here, you know, the age to drink in here in Mexico, it's 18 years. So people will start drinking at 18 years and it's really popular. Like people will go, we got an area that we call Zona Rosa or Pink Zone. And that's for a lot of bars that you might see around. They sell, they serve like really good alcohol beverage in there. You can like mix like a lot of stuff. We even got something, I don't know how to hear this. It's called Michelada. Mm -hmm. And you know, Michelada, it's a beer. And uh, well, you grab the cup, it's beer. It has clamato or tomato juice inside. And then you can put like different kind of toppings that we call it's chamoy, tahin, or different flavors, mango and all that. Then depends how creative you get. You can put some gummies, you can put some shrimps or some stuff inside. So it's probably similar to a Bloody Mary a little bit. So it's that's something that's well really popular. We got another beverage that we call pulque. And pulque, it comes from as well from the agave. But that one, the texture, it's a little bit slimy. And it's a, it's a beverage that it's fermented. So then it depends on the flavor that you want. You can put like mangoes. You can put watermelon, pineapple. Depends on the flavor that you want. You can do it as well, that one. So that one, some people don't like it, like I told you, because it's a little bit slimy. So it depends on what you like. And then obviously the margaritas probably... Uh very popular yeah margaritas as well are really popular like that one like most people you go to a bar that's a standard that you ask for a margarita or margarita and for a michelada those two will be really po popular around and we got something that we call pitufo as well and it's like a blue beverage that it's made with vodka and power a little bit of blue or blueberry orange juice cool and so i think uh the margarita in mexico you won't generally find them frozen correct no no here it's everything you know you see the alcoholic then you add your lime your salt 
So it's it's really different here. Like margaritas are really traditional, and depends how people get because some people get like creative with those, and that's why they add gummies and all that kind of flavor. So you can like custom your margarita in here. Yeah, my uh, my favorite fun fact to always tell people is that the frozen margarita was actually uh, invented in Dallas, Texas, where I'm from, uh, which uh, yeah is <laughs> I feel like a something people just assume is from uh, Mexico, like nachos or burritos, but uh, actually Texas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Like that's something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so cool. So is there anything else that you think people should know before coming to Mexico City for the first time? Yeah. Well, like, yeah, Mexico, like I told you, it's really safe. Just watch out for like all the concerns that you might see always like try to research a little bit of the place where you're staying because like the area that you like a little bit more and fits to you like i told you we got the neighborhood that is condesa that one is a little bit more quiet so if you want to be like rest and all that and if you go to the north that it's polanco it's a little bit more like for bars and all that like i told you it's really enjoyable here to come here to mexico something as well that you might know it's that we don't, you can get through like with credit cards or cards and all that, but always try to bring cash because most people will accept cash. That's something that's a fact and try to bring change because it's kind of hard sometimes to break like the big bills that we have the 500 pesos and not too much people will accept that. So try to bring cash, no cards. In some places you can use cards, just no jewelry, bring your big, your zip, zipper back at the front as well and always use a lot of sunscreen you know it's going to be a little bit sunny here so so on the uh cash is uh what is the tipping uh culture uh like in mexico city is it important or yeah now it has become more important like people the waitress if you go to a restaurant they expect that you leave like 10% of 15% of all you consume, but you know, it's optional. Like here, even you cannot leave nothing. It's going to be okay because it's optional there. But some, some Mexicans have like, take this really seriously that you got to leave like the 10% of 15% of the, of all you consume. Perfect. Well, no, this has been uh, really insightful and uh, been a great conversation. So Gabriel, thank you so much. How can people, uh, who are coming to Mexico City or want to learn more about Mexico City, uh, connect with you. Oh, yeah. Um, well, my the, my Instagram is Mexico Tour City. You can find it, find me there. And as well, I'm on more, I'm in the platforms, like Get Your Guy, you know, like this one. That you saw. I'm, that's my main platform. I'm on Viator. I'm, on, I'm in some platforms like Mexico City Tour or Authentic Culinary Tour. Perfect. Well, I will link everything that you've mentioned on my website and links to uh, ways to connect with you. But uh, yeah, thank you again. This has been great. It has been awesome. Thank you so much for this opportunity, like speaking to you a little bit of my culture and like people can like see a little bit about this. Of course. I hope you've enjoyed my interview with Gabriel. Once again, for all of his recommendations and more, be sure to check out my website, www.tllpod.com. And if you'd like to learn how to make tacos al pastor, you can find my recipe video on TikTok and Instagram at TLL underscore pod. Be sure to come back next week to see what city we dive into next. But until then, happy traveling.